Mediterranean keto is actually not that complicated. However, a sample diet or an example speaks a million words in this case. So I wanted to lay out what you can eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack options, everything, but also give you the full understanding and justification as to why these foods are in place. Now, some of you may not have watched my full how-to Mediterranean keto video, where I broke down the benefits and how it really works. So I encourage you to watch that video, but you can watch it after you watch this one. This way at least gives you, I don't know, the straight up facts so you can just get down to it and get started. But it's important to note that the Mediterranean diet itself, although it sounds like a diet, it's more like a regional thing, okay? It's always talking about sort of the geography and sort of where it's from, where the foods are coming from. So it's not like it's a diet per se, whereas the ketogenic diet or ketogenic pattern is more about your macronutrients. So what that means is the Mediterranean diet and the keto diet are perpendicular diets. They run alongside each other. They don't oppose each other. You can take attributes of the Mediterranean diet and apply it to the macronutrient breakdown of the ketogenic diet. So they work really, really harmoniously together. And the Mediterranean diet has been around for so long and touted as one of the healthiest, most anti-inflammatory diet protocols that is out there it would make sense to just incorporate that alongside the ketogenic diet, which is also one of the most therapeutic and anti-inflammatory diets that are out there. So combine them and you have a recipe for success. All right, so we're gonna have some fun with this. I do wanna ask that you hit that red subscribe button and then do hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. That way you're always seeing my videos and you're never missing things that I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this. Okay, so for breakfast on a Mediterranean keto meal plan, it's actually really tasty. I put together a couple of options here and you can kinda be flexible with them and flexicute as you need to, right? Option number one, two poached eggs. Okay, two whole poached eggs. The reason we're poaching them is we're trying to reduce the added oils. Okay, we don't want that oxidation. We don't want the extra cooking with oils if we don't need it, right? Okay, but then I also add an extra yolk. So yes, you can separate the egg yolk from the white and still just poach the yolk, believe it or not. It just kind of cooks the yolk in a simple form. It cooks a little bit differently or you can scramble it up differently. Point is, poached eggs are totally Mediterranean and they just have that kind of vibe, right? Now, additionally, what you'll wanna put with these eggs, if you like it, is one and a half ounces of smoked lox, so smoked salmon. Now, I want you to be careful because a lot of the smoked salmon, like the Norwegian salmon, can be a little bit sketchy right now when it comes down to mercury and radiation levels. So you wanna go with some of the other kinds of smoked salmon, usually the Atlantic versus the Norwegian. So just pay attention to that. Okay, you can put a little bit of capers on it. Remember, sodium and salt is okay on a ketogenic diet because you're losing those minerals anyway, so it's okay. So don't worry about the salt, it's not a problem. If you don't like the taste of lox, you can always substitute one can of sardines. Okay. Again, might sound a little bit weird and it might be deterring you, but don't worry, I have other options. What we want is we want this high amount of vitamin D first thing in the morning. Studies have shown that the bioavailability of vitamin D and sort of that biosynthesis, it ends up working out a little bit better if we're consuming it from food sources in the morning. So I like getting our vitamin D with our sardines and things like that in the morning. Then I say one cup of spinach sauteed in avocado oil. Avocado oil can handle high heat. Okay, so you take one cup of spinach and you wilt it and you cook it up with a little bit of avocado oil, maybe a half a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon. Cook it up so it kind of shrivels up and it becomes more of a breakfast dish. That way you can make it almost like an eggs benedict, but without the actual muffin, right? And then lastly, I say put a quarter cup of olives, Kalamata olives, black olives, whatever, high amounts of vitamin D2. So we're getting rid of the D2 that's gonna convert into vitamin D3. Okay, really good stuff. So that's a perfect little breakfast there. Now, you don't like eggs or you're sick of eggs. Let's go ahead and look at what I have for option two here. Four ounces of lean ground chicken or lean pork. People will say that pork isn't Mediterranean. Um, I'm pretty sure the Mediterranean diet has a lot of you know, charcuterie, like we've got the prosciutto, we've got the hams. So I think you're okay. You just want it to be lean, okay? You want it to be lean, don't get this high fat stuff. And then we want a half of a medium avocado. And actually, stepping back for one second, why do you want leaner cuts of meat? Because we can control where the fats come from. The nice thing about Mediterranean keto diet is we're getting fats from plant sources, we're getting fats from other sources, we're not relying on meat sources like we would say maybe a dirty keto, like where you're just eating lettuce wrap burgers all the time. Okay, so then half of a medium avocado coming in for fats, a quarter cup of mushrooms, Okay, the reason I'm getting the mushrooms in there again is full body, but also that vitamin D2. And then one ounce of walnuts or pecans. Why walnuts or pecans? Highest omega-3 content. One of the biggest benefits of the Mediterranean keto diet is that we are getting the anti-inflammatory effect of lowered levels of omega-6s. Okay, 
But most nuts have such high amounts of omega-6s, they can be very inflammatory. At least with these walnuts and pecans, we have a nice omega-3 content. Plus, walnuts and pecans are actually a little bit easier to digest. They're softer, they're mechanically easier to break down. So that's a perfect little breakfast there. So you notice how the fats aren't astronomically high. We're leaning on lean proteins and getting nice modest amounts of fats. You can hybridize these if you need to. Now let's go ahead and let's move into lunch. Now it's very important with a Mediterranean style diet too that you have long enough gaps between breakfast and lunch. Okay, so if you eat your breakfast at 7 a.m., you might want to hold off on your lunch until like 1 p.m. You look at the Mediterranean, the European cultures, they do focus a lot of their entertainment around food and things like that, but they also don't snack all day usually. Okay, they have larger meals. They almost follow an intermittent fasting regimen in a lot of ways anyway. So the point is, is I want it to be very clean. Even though I have lists of snacks on the other side of the board here, I want to be able to really make it clear that the snacks are really only if you need them. So lunch options. Option one, five ounces of lean steak. Okay, we're talking lean red meat, not fatty gross cuts of red meat lean red meat, okay, thin sliced if you can, and then I want one tablespoon of avocado mayonnaise. You don't have to make it, it doesn't, it's not something crazy fancy, okay, like Primal Kitchen has avocado mayo, um, some of these other companies, uh, Sir Kensington's have avocado mayo, they're just mayonnaise that are made with avocado oil instead of soybean oil. Now when it comes to the lean meat, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. Okay, so a lot of people will say the Mediterranean keto diet shouldn't have red meat. I beg to differ. I think that's okay, but if you're having low quality red meat, then it's not okay. Okay, so ButcherBox has grass-fed, grass-finished, high omega-3 steak, ground meat, but they also have the pork that you would need, the chicken that you would need, and even the salmon that you would need, which we can talk more about. So, Highly recommend, I put a link down below in the description, ButcherBox delivers the meat right to your doorstep and it's literally cheaper than what you would get at the grocery store when it comes down to grass-fed, grass-finished. So definitely don't wanna miss out on the special link down below in the description if you wanna try this dietary protocol or you're just looking to do keto in general, okay? This lean steak with avocado mayo was actually going to be put on a bun made by a portobello mushroom. So you're making sort of a, uh, almost a steak sandwich, a really lean steak sandwich with avocado mayo, but it gets better. Okay, so then we go one to two tablespoons of olive oil pesto. Good quality pesto is going to be made with olive oil. Okay, you see low quality ones made with canola oil. So look at the label, try to find it with olive oil. Pine nuts are really good. Basil's really good. All these things in pesto are powerful. But we want the olive oil because, and let me get nerdy on you for a second, the olive oil contains something known as oleic acid. Okay, it converts into something called OEA, which activates something in our body known as PPAR alpha, which is a genetic system to turn on more development of brown fat versus white fat, which means when you consume olive oil, your body at a genetic level starts to burn more fat for heat. Okay, that's what brown fat is. So point is, olive oil and avocado oil, amazing things because of the oleic acid. So we want that in there. Now, I put some options here. You could go ahead and you can use egg thins. Okay, so like there's these things called uh, uh, crepinis that you can get at Costco, stuff like that. They're like these little teeny egg thins. So you make this into either a wrap or you could make it into a, a portobello sandwich. Okay, so I put the here as an option, or butter lettuce, make it into a lettuce wrap, because this could be a very good Mediterranean style wrap or a Mediterranean style sandwich. Just a great, delicious lunch that's high fat. Okay, now let's look at option two for a second. Okay, option two, I said five ounces of lean grilled chicken. Okay, grill it in uh, some kind of like lemon dill kind of thing so that you're getting sort of that Mediterranean Greek uh, kind of flavoring there. And then we're keeping it lean. We don't want fatty cuts of meat on Mediterranean keto unless they are very controlled. Especially with poultry, we don't want the fatty cuts of poultry because the fatty acid profile of poultry is so much worse than the fatty acid profile of red meat. For, ex for instance, 10 grams of fat coming from chicken is going to be a much lower quality fat than 10 grams of fat coming from a beef, right? That doesn't mean that beef is better than chicken by any means. It just means if you go with chicken or poultry, you go lean whenever possible. Now, what I've done here is I've created something, and this is something that I've made before. I call it diluted hummus. Okay, hummus is great, but it's not fully keto because the chickpeas do add up in carbs. So what you do is you take a few tablespoons of hummus, the hummus that you would really like on a kind of a Greek style uh, dish, and you dilute it with another tablespoon or tablespoon and a half of either mayonnaise 
or you mash up some avocado and make it into almost a hummus guacamole. You still get the flavor of the hummus, but with much less carbohydrates. So just kind of dilute that, you know, for lack of a better term there. Okay, then we have one ounce of Parmesan Romano or any other kind of clean cheese. Okay, we want that cheese in there just to give it that Mediterranean feel, but the Parmesan and the Romano are gonna be aged cheeses, which have much less of a negative impact as far as the casein proteins go. Plus, because they're aged, they end up getting cultured more and have much less in the way of lactose, much more Mediterranean European style cheese that we would have anyway. The, the quality of the cheese that we get in Europe is so much better than the quality of cheese we typically find in America. So it's important that you note that. All right, and then we have here prosciutto and ham. Uh, but no salami. So you see where I'm going here. I'm almost making my own little charcuterie, right? So it's like a Greek style. So anyway, you can get some cheese sticks that are clean. You can get some Parmesan cheese sticks. Then you can wrap them in a little bit of prosciutto. You can totally make this fun. Then one half to one ounce of pecans, walnuts, or macadamia nuts in this case, okay? So very clean little dish. The thing I like about option two is it's much more of something that you could sort of put uh, just in a little box, almost again, like a charcuterie box that you bring to work. You've got your chicken, you've got your prosciutto, you've got your cheese, you've got your nuts. It's like a little bistro box. Pretty cool little dish there that you can have on the go. Still totally keto. Now we get into dinners. I give you three options for dinners. All of these things you can mix and match, but it gives you a good idea of the plethora of different things that you can consume on Mediterranean keto. Okay, so option number one, one to one and a half cans of skipjack or chunk light tuna. Avoid the albacore, higher mercury content, okay? We want the good, clean chunk light tuna that doesn't have as much mercury. Albacore tastes good, but it's higher mercury. One and a half tablespoons of mayo. Again, goes without saying that's gonna be avocado or olive oil based mayo, no canola. Then one quarter of an avocado cut into small cubes. And then tomatoes, cherry tomatoes cut in half or diced tomatoes. You can mix and match this. You can do whatever you need to do here. Uh, but make that into a little tuna salad. Really good, yummy tuna salad. You can put some celery in there. You can add some other things in there to make some fun of it. But you get the gist. Okay, clean tuna salad. And that's going to go over a bed of baby kale or spinach. Baby kale is easier to break down. You will have a better time. It's not like chowing down on like cellophane like regular kale is. So that's really easy. Then a quarter cup of Parmesan, so a good amount of cheese. We're getting good cheese there. And then olive oil based dressing, whether you just want to use olive oil and vinegar or you want to just throw a bunch of olive oil on there and just make it just an oily salad, totally up to you, okay? So here we have a good amount of fat coming from good sources, the mayonnaise, the avocado, the Parmesan, and the olive oil. Really delicious dish. Then option number two, and you see, let me back up again. All these things are not like hardcore recipes. They're just giving you ideas of combining the perfect macronutrients and the perfect fatty acid profile with Mediterranean keto. So option two, surf and turf, one of my favorite ones. Surf and turf, in this case, I'm talking about maybe three to four ounces of good quality shrimp. Shrimp has your high amounts of zinc, your high amounts of copper, your high amounts of selenium. They are a mineral epicenter. They have so much mineral power that can help our brains send the right signals and help our bodies function properly. And then you combine that with the good fatty acid profile of some lean beef, then you've got a really good situation. If you don't eat beef, you can still combine this with chicken, just do lean chicken. So um, a filet mignon, if you want to go fancy on this, would be amazing. Some shrimp and lean filet, amazing. And just in case you are still wondering, yes, you can get fillets and you can get good quality fish also through ButcherBox. So check them out down in the description for all this stuff when it comes down to the meat side of things. You're gonna serve that up over one cup of riced or mashed cauliflower. Riced if you wanna do it easy because you can get it in the frozen section or mashed if you have some time to mash it up. One and a half ounces of goat or feta cheese mixed into the rice. You're almost making a pilaf or you're make, mixing it into the mashed potatoes to give it that Mediterranean sort of Greek feel. Okay? That feta is usually coming from sheep or goat, and it's going to be much lower in, again, those negative A1 casein proteins. We'll talk about those in other videos, won't waste your time here. One tablespoon of ghee just gives it that body and gives it that flavor. Ghee is clarified butter. You don't see a lot of straight up butter on a Mediterranean diet, but you do see ghee because it's clarified and it's cleaner, and it's not necessarily part of the Mediterranean diet, but we can adopt it into the Mediterranean diet in this case. All right, and then we have uh, baby broccoli or Brussels sprouts. We want our cruciferous veggies with dinner whenever we can. Gonna support thyroid function. It's also going to support proper endocrine function. It's going to support our estrogen management within the body. So really good stuff for men and women. And then I usually say add a tiny bit of citrus 
with your marinade or anything that you're doing. So if you think about sort of a Greek pilaf or you think of some of these rices that would have feta in it, they have this like sweet feel. A little bit of citrus, like a little bit of lemon or a little bit of orange and possibly even a little bit of stevia mixed into that rice, along with that feta, believe it or not, gives it that really just almost, uh, how do I put this? And I lived in Italy for a while, but almost that, that Cinque Terre feel that you would get in like a coastal region of Italy. Anyhow, option number three, this is going to be a gut health option because the Mediterranean diet is really good for gut health and one of the biggest pieces and reasons people do it. Now, when you look at the keto diet, it's also good for gut health. So let's combine some cool things here. You can rotate through these. Five to six ounces of chicken made into kebabs. And you don't have to, you can have it straight up. But again, mix it up with some dill, make fun, uh, have some fun with the marinade. And then we're gonna make some tzatziki uh, with Greek yogurt or Bulgarian yogurt. Now the cool thing is, all you have to do is really add some dill, some salt, some other spices. You can look up different recipes for tzatziki. But I like to use Bulgarian yogurt because it's a higher fat content and it's just a better ratio of fat to carb. But you can easily make it with Greek yogurt. And we're not talking much, maybe three to four tablespoons. You can get one of those little uh, containers of Greek yogurt and that's gonna be more than enough. But you're getting the probiotic effect that's going to be good for your gut. Just enough dairy to still work for Mediterranean keto. Then 12 to 15 stalks of asparagus, good, powerful prebiotic fiber. Okay, very good to help grow the existing gut bacteria that you're already making such a positive change with. Then what you wanna to do to that asparagus is add nutritional yeast, a couple tablespoons. Why do I do this? Huge surge of beta-glucans, huge surge of white blood cell activity that actually can help kill off bad, basically bad gut bacteria. So really good stuff there. And then we have one and a half tablespoons of coconut oil or ghee to mix into the asparagus. You're making almost this kind of fatty asparagus, if you want to call it that, but it's amazing. And this fat combines the nutritional yeast to give it almost a cheesy consistency. And then we have a half of avocado just for the fats. Okay, yeah, there is some gut health there, but really it's just for the fats. And then add some chia or some flax. That way you get the soluble fiber that helps keep things moving as well. So you can see we've got a very clear methodical approach for gut health there. Now we have to jump on over and talk about snacks and supplements for one second, because if you're gonna do this diet, there are gonna be deficiencies, just like any dietary protocol. However, I will say the Mediterranean keto diet is probably one of the best diets in terms of not giving you deficiencies. It's very, very abundant with a lot of what you need. But let's talk about snacks. And remember, try not to snack. Every time we snack, we spike our insulin, and when we spike our insulin, we end up shutting off fat burning for that period of time. So you're better off to just have clear lines of delineation between your meals, no blurred lines with snacking. But if you must, here's what you can really go for. Nuts and nut butters. However, I don't recommend having them a lot, but here's the order in which I would consume them. Uh, pecans first, okay. Then, oops, it looks like I wrote peons, that's okay. Pecans, then we have walnuts, macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, pine nuts, and then almonds last. Almonds aren't bad, they're just last on this list because they're a high, higher omega-6 content. Uh, also, make some chia pudding. Take a tablespoon or two of chia seeds, mix it with a little bit of almond milk or coconut milk, let it set for a while, and that's a great little satiating snack, high in soluble fiber that's totally Mediterranean keto. All of these nuts could also be consumed in nut butter form, but just note, they are trap foods and you consume a lot of calories with them, so be very careful. You notice I don't have nut butters on here a whole lot. Other snacks. Olives, snack on olives. Why do people always just think that it has to go on a dish? Olives are tasty to snack on, so enjoy them. Uh, I put SMASH in there, which is an acronym for sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, and herring. Okay, these are the best canned fish that you can have, and they are a perfect little snack on keto, and they are a perfect snack on Mediterranean diets, let alone Mediterranean keto. So go to town on those. Seaweed snacks, just try to get seaweed snacks that are in olive oil, not in canola oil. Seaweed snacks, very, very high in iodine, which is very good for your thyroid. Your thyroid combines iodine with tyrosine, and that's how thyroid hormone is ultimately made. You wanna burn fat, you wanna keep your metabolism high, there you go. Okay, and then we wanna go with uh, artichokes are just a great little snack. Appetizers, good prebiotic fiber, again, very Mediterranean. Dip them in some mayonnaise, things like that. And then fruit in small amounts, less than 10 grams of carbs per day coming from fruit is okay. Mediterranean diets are high in good amounts of fruit, melons, berries. I recommend getting them from berries. Don't use them as a snack. Use them more so as maybe an addition to a meal if you wanted a little bit of something sweet. Fresh, good quality cheese is okay as a snack, but don't have a lot of it. Okay? You gotta use moderation here. And then cured meats, again, healthy cure, uh, cured meats. So when you look at a cured meat label, it should say like two things. That's 
the meat and salt and maybe some enzymes or maybe some other small thing, but no preservatives, no other things. If you look at most salamis, unfortunately, salamis have a bunch of other garbage in there. I like prosciutto, I like you know, cured ham, because it's super simple. It's a little salty, but it's clean and it's usually pretty lean. Now let's talk supplements for just a moment, and I don't want to spend a lot of detail here because this is a really ambiguous area depending on who you are and what your needs are, but some important things, coenzyme Q10 between three and 600 milligrams per day will be perfect. What that's going to do is it's going to improve the velocity in a, in a way of how you can transfer energy into the mitochondria, basically create more energy on keto. Fish oil because the whole spirit of this dietary pattern is getting our omega-3 content high and our omega-6 levels low, it never hurts to support that. So go for a krill, go for a calamarine, go for an algal oil, avoid low quality fish oil, spend the extra couple dollars and get one that has a high DHA content. Okay, then vitamin D3 and K2. Why is the Mediterranean lifestyle so healthy? Well, a lot of it is because the foods that they're consuming are high in vitamin D, and a lot of those cultures are getting a lot of vitamin D. They're out in the sun a lot. They're in that sun belt. So they get good amounts of vitamin D, and then the food that they eat, consequently, has high levels of vitamin D. You could be living in Minnesota or up north in Canada trying to follow this dietary protocol, and you might not get all the vitamin D that you need from your food, right? So I highly recommend between 2,500 and 4,000 IUs of vitamin D plus about 300 milligrams of K2, which comes with a lot of vitamin D anyway, to get those uh, levels up. Magnesium, I would say between two and 600 milligrams of magnesium per day, preferably through a form such as dimagnesium malate, some chelated form, not citrate or um, oxide, really cheap versions. Okay, then apple cider vinegar, sip on throughout the day or have with your meals just to help with digestion and blood sugar control. And then the occasional MCT oil, because I know that question's gonna come up. MCT is not really Mediterranean, but I know people wanna add it to their coffee and they wanna do things like that. It's okay in small amounts. And I'll end on this note with coffee. Yes, coffee is okay. Just keep it easy with the cream. Try not to go overboard. Don't add the sugar. Follow typical keto guidelines for that. So here you have it everything laid out to do a Mediterranean keto diet. Obviously, there's lots of recipes. And if you want to see recipes, you want to see some cooking videos on Mediterranean keto, let me know. You have to comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will never know. So as always, please, please, please do keep it locked in and please hit that red subscribe button and keep it always on this channel every single day. And I will see you in the next video.